good, YouTube? It's your boy Damien Cryer, and I am back with another cooking video. This is going to be like a short cooking video, guys, um, but this is one that was highly recommended. I know you guys have actually seen me cook greens and fried chicken wings before, but as we all know, you have a lot of young people that's coming into their own space now. And what I mean by young people coming into their own space, a lot of younger people like 18, 19, 20, they're graduating, they're moving out their parents' homes and stuff like that, and they're getting their own apartment or house for the first time. And a lot of them be wanting to learn certain cooking videos of how to cook. Now, you guys have seen me do multiple videos on how to cook greens, but one of the greens I've really never really cooked was collard greens because I can never find collard greens. Everywhere you go, they have turnip greens and mustard greens. Mustard greens are pretty good, but turnip greens, to me, they're like really, really bitter. And no matter how much sugar that you add to them, that bitter taste is just really hard to go away. So somebody asked me to do a video on how to make greens and fried chicken wings. So I went up, uh, actually this morning I got up at 6 o'clock. Well, I got up before 6 and went to HEB with the hopes that HEB would have been open today at six because of the website says six and if you guys google it right now their website still says that they're open at 6 a.m however they don't really open till seven so i had to come home and go back up there at seven and get the green so i went and i got two bags of collard greens and thank god i found them because these greens are hard to keep in stock Let me move this over these greens are really hard to keep in stock because these are like one of people's favorite greens right here are the collard greens. Now, if you ever go into a store around the holiday and you see like in the vegetable section where you're looking for greens at, you're going to almost never find collard greens. You're going to find mustard greens or turnip greens or kale greens. Now, people get confused. Kale greens and collard greens are not the same. I'll tell you what it is. Kale is what they use to actually dress a plate. Like if you go to like one of the fancy restaurants, it don't even have to be like a fancy restaurant. They have like an orange slice cut with a piece of green kale in it. It's just to make the decoration of the plate look good. That's not really greens to me. This right here is greens. So what I did was I uh, put the greens in a crock pot earlier today and I've been letting them cook all day long. Um, I actually got smoked turkey necks in these greens. Um, so the greens are actually done. But I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. I buy the greens in a bag. Even though they, they say that they're pre-cleaned, I still, um, even though that the greens come in a bag and that they say that they clean the greens three or four times, I still wash my greens off three or four times after that. Because you never know like how clean people are when they clean stuff. But here's the, the uh, smoked turkey next. I don't want to get the camera too close. That meat is extremely tender. When I eat greens now, I used to eat them with smoked ham hocks and stuff like that, but um, I eat them with smoked turkey necks in them now, and they are so freaking good. So the greens are actually done, guys, but I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. And I also have seven chicken wings right here in the sink. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to be using only lemon pepper seasoning to season these wings up. And I'm going to get these seasoned up now because I have the oil on, and the oil is actually popping over there. So I'm actually just going to put the lemon pepper seasoning on my wings. Now what I do is I put a little bit lemon pepper on the wings before I put them in a batter. And then when they come out the batter, I will actually add, I mean once they get done cooking, I will actually add more lemon pepper seasoning because I'm a lemon pepper seasoning type of guy. So I have some flour here that's already pre-mixed with a little, um, a little bit of um, black pepper in them. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wings right here and I'm going to put them inside this mix right here, batter, and I'm just going to shake the bag up really good. And I'm going to actually set the camera down for a second while I do that so I can get these wings in the grease so the grease doesn't burn. So I have the chicken wings inside of the batter. Let me turn on this extra light right here. I've already put the wings in here and shaken them up. It's, it's like a really simple process, guys. Once, like, I keep this right here pre-season and i use a ziploc bag because i can either use this again or i can just throw it away and it's real easy to dispose of it 
I have the oil right here. I don't want to get too close because that oil is really hot. And I always say when I'm doing like a cooking video of frying food, how to tr uh, test the grease or the oil. I used to put water in it when I first, like a little dab of water when I first learned how to cook, but I found out that's a very, very bad mistake. So what I'll do, is I'll take a little bit of the flour out of the bag of what the, what, what, what the meat in it already seasoned, and I will put it in there. And see how that bubble up? As long as that, that bubbles up like that, I know that that grease is ready. So I'm just gonna take gently and set all seven chicken wings in here. And um, if you notice, when I do fried foods on a stove like this, I always fill the, I don't fill the pan all the way to the top, but I put enough meat inside, I'm sorry, I put enough grease or oil inside of the pan that I'm cooking in, so it covers the meat up 100%. Now, a lot of people use a skillet when they fry their foods, but I don't. I use a big old pan like this to fry my meat. And the reason why I do that is because if you deep fry it, you don't really have to flip the meat over. Like a lot of people, you'll see them standing in the kitchen, constantly flipping over the meat, standing there waiting for it to brown and flip it over. But if you deep fry your foods, you really don't have to sit there and wait for it to brown on one side. What happens is if, if, if the meat, if the grease, Say for instance, you got this much oil in the pan and you put your meat in it. The oil is gonna cover the meat up so that way you never have to flip it. Now I will flip it just for good measurement sakes to make sure that it's done and crispy all the way through on both sides, but you really don't have to. So I deep fry a lot of my foods for that purpose because I really don't like to um, sit there and constantly turn it over. So as you guys know, we experience some really bad weather down here in Texas and I made a video the other day where I showed you where my pipes were broken and stuff like that. They had to come out here and fix my pipes and put new parts on them. So they got me hot water back running. But as a day or two that went by, I was actually in my office space earlier and I looked up at the ceiling and something told me to just look up. And I looked up and seen this long crack going across my ceiling, which means that there was water damage that caused one of my drywall panels to kind of come down a little bit. So that kind of scared the hell out of me. So that's something else that I just discovered today that I'm gonna have to get on the phone with the insurance companies because obviously when they was out here, they missed it, but this is what it is right here, guys. This is like my little office. I haven't did videos in here in a while, but I do come in here and do like a lot of like mukbangs and videos like that and stuff. But I happen to be sitting in this chair right here and I looked up right there, guys, and I seen this crack. It, it, it actually stops right there but I see a crack right here going across. So I already notified the people that I need to notify and tell them what's going on. Now, as you can see, I don't really see water because if there was water damage, you would actually see like the little brown spots. Let me actually turn this light up. This is one of those uh, switches where you can adjust the lights, dim them or, but I don't really see any spots where it says water damage. But that's one of the things that I did discover today and I'm gonna have to get that addressed. addressed. Um, so I've been actually doing a lot of work over the last two days since I actually got power back and got my water back on. So in the video I showed you the other day, my floor had looked extremely, extremely awful. I end up getting this stuff and I end up redoing my floor yesterday. I spent maybe 25 minutes in each room redoing the whole floor. If you look at the other video that I released, showing the damage to my home. You guys will see the floor was extremely, extremely messed up. Um, I did clean the carpet the best way that I could. I had uh, two huge fans on the carpet trying to dry it, but the carpet is still kind of damaged. It doesn't have the same color that it had before. But I did get the floor looking a whole lot better, so I'm thankful for that. And I'm gonna show you guys what I actually used on this floor because a lot of people have asked me in multiple videos like Damien, what type of stuff do you use on your floor when you're doing your uh, floor at home? And I actually got this stuff from Walmart. I'm gonna show you this real quick. So you guys can see I'm actually in a larger room. This stuff right here is extremely good and at first I didn't really know anything about it because I was actually using like a hard, I mean like a, a, a mop and soap on my hardwood floor. But then I found out later on because I was like, where's the shine at to my floor? The floor used to have like a really, really nice gloss to it when I first got this house. But then as, as, as time went by, I started mopping the floor. I would put like a little 
uh, pine saw or something inside the mop bucket and I would wipe the floor or mop the floor with the mop like a really soaking wet mop and I realized that that was a mistake I was not only damaging the floor and allowing water and moisture to go under the laminate flooring but I was also stripping all of the gloss off of it so I ended up doing some research on Google and tried to find out what's the best way to get my store my uh, floor restored and actually you guys can see I actually did the kitchen too okay there we go my camera had blurred up on me so this is what it looks like now I mean this floor was just disgusting looking guys and there's the water damage I was showing you the other room but you guys can see the difference right now what I'm talking about see the water damage that's going along the ceiling right there it goes over here and then it stops so when I came home the other day the water was pouring off this panel right here which there was a pipe outside the house that was running down and the water was coming into the house and it was getting all over the floor right here and that's why I looked up here and noticed I don't see like the water spots right there but I do see a big crack and I don't want to take a chance of sitting here one day and that ceiling comes down on me I've had it happen before not here in this house but years ago but back to what I was saying this is the stuff that I went to Walmart I googled this guys I went to Walmart and I got this stuff. It's called Quick Shine Hardwood Floor. This stuff right here, guys, all you have to do. Now, if you have, if your floor is real, real dull looking and you lost that really, really beautiful gloss to it from when you first got your floor laid down, all you do is you take you a mop, but not a soaking wet mop, just a, just a barely wet mop, wring it out good, and just wipe it. That way you get like the little dirt prints off of it. And once it dries, you take a little bit of this stuff right here, man, and make sure that you have a dry cloth or a dry mop or something. Take this and squirt this on the floor. You just squirt it on the floor. You don't have to mix it with water or nothing. Just squirt it right on the floor. Take your mop, something dry, guys, not wet, dry, and just rub it just like you're mopping the floor. And you wait about 25 to 40 minutes, and when you come back in the house, it looks like it's wet, but the stuff is just completely dry and it's awesome this stuff works wonders but I want to just bring that to you guys because a lot of people been asking me about the hardwood floor and how I got my floor to look the way I did now back to the greens guys again collard greens so I don't have to mix these greens I get these greens right here because as you see when they do pre-cut these greens they cut them up really really fine versus the kale greens or the mustard greens or the turnip greens they're really big and fluffy and they got all those nasty yucky looking stems in them when you put them in your now i put mine in a crock pot because i like them to cook slow because throughout the day i'm always doing stuff and i don't always have my hands free rocking running here every five minutes and keep adding water doing this so the crock pot cooks them to perfection these greens right here are not really bitter but what i do when i make my greens just so you guys know I wait until my greens cook down because when you put greens in a crock pot, it looks like it's a lot of greens and the pot overflows. You come back an hour or two later when the water heats up, the green starts to cook down. It's next to nothing in the pot. So I make sure that I stuff the pot with greens really well. After about an hour or two of cooking in the crock pot, the greens cook down. I'll come in, I will just like taste the water a little bit. You can taste the bitterness of it. So what you do is you put a little bit, well, you put like four or five spoons of sugar inside the greens and what that does is it kills that bitter smell and you put just a tad bit of regular oil where there's vegetable oil in there you just put just a little bit of vegetable oil in there that helps blend in with that sugar and kills that bitterness and then i don't season my greens like i used to because i use smoked turkey neck as you guys know smoked meats already produces its own salt so you don't have to really over season and stuff now what I will do is put hot sauce on my greens when I get done and get ready to eat so anyway I just wanted to share that with you guys I'm gonna put the lid back on here while these wings are over here cooking and the wings should only be cooking for like another I don't know 10 minutes you can you can usually tell when the chicken is done because what happens get a pair of tongs what happens is when the chicken wings get done not only do they start floating to the top of the grease but you can also hear the sound change right now it sounds like a little waterfall but as the wings get done they will actually start floating to the top of the grease and you won't see all those bubbles like that so i would say cook your chicken wings if you deep frying them at least cook them for 15 or 20 minutes but you want to make sure that that oil is nice and hot you don't never want to take meat that you're frying i don't care what type of meat it is 
Don't never take fried meat and put the meat inside of oil that's not hot. Because what's going to happen, if you don't let that oil get good and hot, that meat's going to sit, once, once you get it battered up, that meat's going to go straight to the bottom of that powder pan. And it's just going to just soak up all that oil. And 10 or 15 minutes later, when that grease finally gets warm, your meat's going to be really yucky. And when you bite into it, it's going to be all full of oils and just fatting. So you don't want to ever put your uh, meat inside of lukewarm grease. So I'm gonna mukbang this food when I get done, guys. So I'm gonna turn this camera off and I'm gonna see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, guys, so I am finally back, guys. As you see, I got the chicken wings laid out. I got them uh, collard greens with the smoked turkey neck in them. And I'm gonna ready to save my grace, man. And we're gonna get right into this video real quick. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for this food. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this food. Thank you for blessing my household, Lord. Thank you for continuing to watch over me, strengthening me in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. So yes, I am so hungry, guys. I have been waiting all day just for this meal right here. And I wasn't joking. I brought a whole bottle of hot sauce in here. Me and Erica did a mukbang the other day and we had the aluminum foil laid out on the table, which made the video a lot better because you could actually, let me turn my volume off. Whenever I'm doing a eating video or something, my phone always rings. So the aluminum foil actually made it a lot better, especially for video purposes. And then when it's cleanup time, I just bring my wastebasket in here and slide everything into the wastebasket. But so first thing I'm gonna do is get into these greens. They look like guys. Smoked turkey neck, everything. Everything. Mmm. This is so good. Oh, come here. That meat trying to get away. Mmm. I seen someone in the comments real quick on a couple of videos back when I did a mukbang, and they was like, oh my God, smacking and the sounds you make when you're eating is so annoying. It gets on my nerves. Can you please stop smacking and chewing with your mouth closed and opening all this? It's like, it's a mukbang. It's a mukbang. You have to talk while you're eating, unless it's uh, ASMR. Am I saying that right? Is it ASMR or AMSR? I think it's ASMR. So those are the eating videos where they're not talking, but they're actually gonna still be smacking and stuff like that. Mm. Them greens is on point. For the persons or people who asked me to do this particular video, thank you guys for that. I've been wanting some greens, I just haven't cooked any lately. Until today. Mmm. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I don't think I know anyone who can fry chicken wings that's better than mine. I'm not saying there's nobody out there. I just haven't tasted them. I love eating at restaurants, but sometimes when you order that stuff at the restaurant and you get home, it doesn't taste the same. So stuff like this, I enjoy cooking myself. This mukbang is not gonna be long by any means. I wanted, my goal was to teach you guys how to make greens at home and fried chicken wings and what type of seasonings and stuff to use and how long to cook them. 
but I'm one of the only ones who really do like a cooking video and I actually mukbang it when I'm done cooking. Because people do like to see you taste the food. So, while we're doing the mukbang part of the video, I'm gonna answer a few questions. So like, whenever I drop a video, I have like some of like the same people who are asking me like the same questions. They'll be like, how does it feel to be, mm -mm. that guy, excuse me guys, I'm hungry. I'm dogging this food bad. How does it feel to be 50 years old and still having kids? I think I addressed it before um, during the Q&A, but I have like a lot of new people that's joining the Cryer family every day. Thank you guys for that. And a lot of them don't go back and watch all of the old videos when they subscribe. So, um, just to reiterate that, answer to that question again. For me to be 50 years old and still being able to have kids, honestly, I feel blessed. I mean, I truly feel blessed. I'm thankful for all of my kids. Every last one of them. Me and my kids, we may not talk every single day. You know, from time to time, we may have our ups and downs. But I'm grateful for all of my kids, man. I'll be 50 years old and still be able to, to have life, to be able to create life. It's actually a good feeling. It's actually a blessing. You know, people have to look past the old, you're gonna be paying child support, and this and that. But you know, for me, I was paying that my whole life. You gotta remember, I had five kids before Dion was born. And so it's like, having kids is a blessing. It's way more than just making a child support payment. It's way more than just buying diapers and strollers and car seats. It's about just being grateful that I'm still able to be able to have life that can carry my name on even years after I'm gone, you know? So I feel really grateful. I mean, I really do. So, I mean, when someone also asked me like, do I plan on having any more kids? Now that's an answer right there. You know what, that's a question right there. That is really hard to answer a question like that because you never know when it's your turn. But what I do know is I know Darian was the baby and he's still my baby, he's gonna always be my baby. All of my kids. But what I do know, and I can't answer honestly, I did want another child. Before Dion was born, I wanted another child. I had expressed that, I think I expressed that in multiple videos, you know, that I did want to have another child one day. So, I feel really, really grateful. And moving on, the big question, the big question that was asked on multiple occasions, how am I able to divide myself up equally? among all of my kids, being that some live in different states and stuff. That one right there, has always been a tough one for me, you know, because the truth of the matter is, it's almost impossible to divide yourself equally among everybody. The only thing that you can do, mm, sorry about that. Only thing that you can do is try to do your best, you know, and try to be there for everyone. And sometimes, me being a dad, but I have multiple kids that wasn't in the same home, 
you know, I'm gonna, you know, it's, it, it's one of those situations for me where where I'm gonna piss somebody off and I'm gonna make somebody happy. And it's always been that way for me. You know, people can't really judge you off of your experiences unless they've been where you've been. You have a lot of people who've never been a stepdad before. You have a lot of moms who've never been a stepmom before. They all have kids by one person. But I know a lot of people will be quick to judge you and tell you what you should and what you shouldn't do, but they've never actually walked in your footsteps before. So it's hard. It's hard to divide myself up equally amongst everyone. But what I do know is all of my kids need me, even though they're grown. Most of my kids are grown. The majority of my children are adults. They're in their 20s and 30s. And I have a four, uh, one just turned um, 13 years old, February 14th. I had another one just turned 29 on February 18th. Uh, Dion is going on two months. Um, on the 29th of this month. Wait, this month got 29 days in it? It's something like that. But what I do know is that even though majority of my children are grown and adults, they're out of they only have their own houses, they're married. Some are married, some are not married, but they have kids, they made me a grandfather. I know that they still need me in their life, but I know that the younger ones, like Dion and Darian, needs me more than they need me. So for me, I don't know. Of me saying it's a lose lose for me all the way around, no matter what. But from what I've been, you know, saying, it's pretty much sort of like a loss for me. Because, like I said, you're gonna be, you have to be more than a multitasker when you have multiple kids that wasn't in the same household or by different women. I didn't really wanna say that, but, you know. So. It is hard to juggle with. Again, you're gonna make some of them kids happy and you're gonna piss off the other ones. But at the same time, being that I'm in that position that I'm in, where I have my kids spread it out like that, It's something that I'm gonna have to deal with for the rest of my life because those are choices that I made. You know, none of my kids are a mistake. Um, I don't regret none of them. I love every last one of them. Um, but juggling, divide my time amongst all of them. It's a challenge, but I do try. I don't think I get enough credit for what I for the things that I do, as far as trying to make myself available to everybody. I don't ever get enough credit for that. You know, uh, like I said, it's a lose for me all the way around. Well, only thing I can do is just try to keep doing what I'm doing now. If, like, if I call one of my kids, they don't answer my calls, they don't respond to me, and I have to just take that and just keep it moving. But I know if they ever need me, whether it's my little ones or my older ones, all they gotta do is pick the phone up and call me. You know, I'm gonna always be there for them, no matter what, good or bad. So yes, it is very, very challenging trying to be there for everyone because it's next to impossible. You know, when I moved, I gave up everything when I moved out of Indiana. I gave up my apartment, which wasn't much, but it was mine. I gave up my job after 15 years. It wasn't much, but it was mine. And I moved out here, and I ended up having to leave Darian behind, which is really was, was really hard for me because at the time, he was the baby, you know. And now that I'm here in Houston, I've been here going on July 28th to be two years been here going on two years and the only thing I can do is just try to make the best out of it. 
So I do go back and forth to Indiana to see Darian. I do travel back and forth to see Dion or Dion, his mama, come here to see me. You know. So I still try to make everything work. Again, you're never gonna be able to please everybody. So I guess what I'm trying to say, the answer to that question is how do I juggle having multiple kids spread out like that? It's hard. It is hard. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie about that. It's very hard. Um but as far as now, only thing I can do now is try to make the same mistakes now that I made in the past. And what I mean by making mistakes in the past, what I mean as far as like having kids and not being there for them, getting locked up, uh, choosing the street life over my responsibilities and stuff like that. So I guess, I don't know, There's it's really hard to answer that question. Now, had, all of my kids been by one woman? I guess I can answer that question simply. I could say something like, well, on the weekend, I just go pick up all of my kids. And, you know, life is good. But that's not the case with me because, I don't know, it's kind of hard to get everybody together under the same roof at one time. Again, you have, like I said, I have one in Indiana. I got two here in Houston. Um, I got another one here in Texas. That's not far away. I have one in Mississippi. So it was hard to get everybody under the roof at the same time. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is because, again, majority of my children are adults. And everybody's like working, they have jobs. Um, sometimes it's not easy to just pack up and just leave like that, jump on a flight. Because my kids have kids. So it's like everybody has their own thing going on. And that's something I probably should have caught or did when they were younger, it was like trying to get everybody together all the time. But again, the decisions and choices that I made that landed me where I went back in the 90s, kind of, you know, messed up everything for what I should have been doing. So, right now, today, it's still very challenging to try to be in everybody's lives. Like I said earlier on in the video, I might have said it two or three times. You could have good intentions, but you're gonna end up making somebody happy and you're gonna end up hurting the other one's feelings. So, mm. Guys, guys, guys. Mm, mm, mm. Call me what you want when this video go off. But don't forget to call me fool. Because I'm going to be fool and ready to lay down. <laughs> mm. 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 There was another question someone asked me. I want to touch on. Touch on. I'll be trying to touch on things that people be asking me in comments. But uh, there'd be so many comments, guys. I can't remember all of them. Ah, I know what it was. There was another one of those situations where the same question was asked, but by different people. Someone asked me, will I ever get married again? Well, I think we all want to answer the question, to ask you that question. Well, I would love to get married again one day. I 
I've always considered myself as a family man. You gotta think about it. The type of stuff that I love to do, I mean, everything that, well, I ain't gonna say everything, but a lot of the stuff I like to do, it spells family. I like to go fishing. That's what a family man does. I like to go to the park. Family man. I like to cook. Family man. I love to stay up late and watch movies and I love to cuddle. Excuse me. Family man. A lot of things that I love to do spells family man. I've always been a family man, even before my even before I knew I was a family man. Um I've always been a family man. And uh so would I ever get married again? Only God knows that. But would I like to get married again? Absolutely. I would love to get married again. You know? Um, we just have to just take the time. Marriage is like, marriage is not something that you just jump into. You know? A lot of people get married for the wrong reasons. A lot of people get married because they don't want someone else to happy. That's not a reason to get married. A lot of people get married because they have kids. That's not a reason to get married. A lot of people want to get married because you find they don't want nobody else looking at you or she thick and got a nice body and they don't want nobody else touching her. You need to get married for the right reasons. Get married because you really genuinely love each other. You know, that's what it's all about. It, you know, it's got to be genuine love at the end of the day. I mean, I literally know people, I ain't gonna say no now, but I've, I've known people throughout my life during the 50 years I've been on the earth who actually married people because they were fine. You know? They literally married an individual because they was fine. And that marriage was shortly lived. I know people who marry people because they have money. That marriage was shortly lived. I'm gonna give you guys a perfect example. How many times did you guys turn on television or watch news or something and see some big famous celebrity that's a trillionaire is getting his third divorce? That happens every day. Money does not keep people together. Love does. Money doesn't keep people together. Being fine doesn't keep a marriage together. But what does keep a marriage together is real, genuine love. So again, will I ever get married again? Only God knows that. But would I love to get married again? Absolutely. Who wants to be lonely and single? Or unless you just want to be a player, which I'm not. I probably was years ago. Them days is over with for me. The women today are not the same women they used to be. The guys today are not the same guys they used to be. Things have changed. You have to really be careful when you make your decision and make a commitment. My current relationship, I've been in over a year now. And you know, we've had our faults, our ups and downs, but for the most part, for the most part, we do pretty good together. We have good conversations. We do really nice stuff together. We go places, we watch movies, we cook together. We go to the park, we go fishing together. Everything that I talk about that I really like and love that makes me a family man, we do together. Do we have our small little slip ups? Just like every other human being in the world. You know, um, so I think right now everything is on the right path. Everything is on the right track, you know. Um, but yeah, so in a way, I am getting ready to end this video off Y'all know what my mukbangs? I usually never eat all my food. Because I talk so damn much during the video. 
Now this one right here, I ate it all. Mmm. Mmm. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. What time is it? It's 108. It's 20 minutes till 8. Low key, I might eat some more off camera. Yeah, I don't want y'all to see me because I might be like, you too greedy. So listen guys, I thank you guys for watching this video, man. I love you guys. If you have a video that you want me to do, all you have to do is leave me a comment in the comment section down below after the video. We're having another t-shirt giveaway on the Prior Family this coming up Tuesday, guys. So keep your post notifications on, be subscribed to the channel, and most importantly, keep the comments clean and positive. Um, but I love you guys, man. Until next time, I'm Damian Cryer. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Peace. Mm-hmm.